Hi everyone, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA and we are continuing on our task list 5 series for those of you that are studying for the big exam. I'm talking about the BCBA exam. If you haven't been following us, please go ahead and start right back from the beginning. I highly recommend it only because we start from literally section A and now we are at section D-2. Um, and on today's video we're going to be talking about the difference between external and internal validity. So let's get at it. <laughs> Now whether you're conducting clinical research or you're talking about clinical interventions, it's really important to demonstrate that our interventions have both internal and external validity. Now internal validity means that the experiment or your intervention shows that the measures in the dependent variable are changed due to the independent variable or your intervention. Um, and there are no extraneous or uncontrolled or even unknown variables that are affecting your dependent variable. Now, if you can demonstrate that the independent variable was responsible for this change, then it means that the experiment or your treatment has a high degree of validity. For example, if you are a clinician and you want to implement a potty training protocol, this is your independent variable, and you want to increase the voiding in the toilet, um, that would be your dependent variable. So every time that that little kiddo goes to the bathroom, uh, you want to make sure that the potty training protocol is actually responsible for the increase in those voids in the toilet. If other factors besides the independent variable change uh, the potty training protocol that's going to be introduced or that is being introduced, uh, this would make us less likely to believe that the potty training protocol was actually responsible for that particular change. For example, let's say that parents previously tried to sit their child in an adult toilet, so one that we've all seen before but then they decided to change it to one that magically sinks. It's a toddler sized toilet um, at the same time that you were introducing your procedure. So that change of a more fun toilet might be responsible for the increased toileting rather than your protocol. Um, uh, hopefully, if you have any questions on that, please let us know. I don't know if there is, in fact, a fun singing toilet. This is just a fun example I wanted to give you all. Now let's move on to external validity. This means that the results of your experiment or your treatment are generalizable to other clients or subjects. Um, or in settings or other behaviors. So for example, let's say that your toileting protocol, again, being your independent variable, shows an increase in those toileting attempts, your dependent variable. And you wanna try the same protocol with another client. This would be generality. So if that particular protocol increases the toileting attempts for that client, then your data would prove that it is effective and it also has external validity. Now, external validity is important because it will demonstrate and it shows that the specific intervention can be effective for a variety of individuals, behaviors, settings, rather than just one. This emphasis of generality uh, corresponds with important in dimensions of behavior analysis outlined by Bayer, Wolf, and Riesley. If you need a refresher on the dimensions of science of behavior, go back to task list A. Those videos cover identifying the goals of behavior analysis as a science, and that's gonna really help emphasize what I've been talking about today when we talk about generality. So once again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please go ahead and write them below. As always, please like, subscribe, and share. I look forward to seeing you next week when we cover D-3 in our task list five series of studying for the BCBA exam. Good luck studying out there.